Hello students, today let us continue with two component system and in two component system today we are going to go ahead with ferric chloride water system. As we know like we have got three types of two component systems involving solid liquid equilibrium. Type 1 where two components do not react with each other but simply mix with each other in molten state or in solution examples are lead silver system and potassium iodide water system. In type 2 components react to form a compound with congruent melting point that is the compound is stable up to its melting point. Example is ferric chloride water system and in type 3 components react to form a compound with incongruent melting point that is the compounds formed do not remain stable up to the melting point. Example is sodium potassium system. Like quick revision of what is eutectics and what is eutectic mixture. A liquid mixture of two components which has the lowest freezing point compared to all other liquid mixtures is called a eutectic mixture. This mixture freezes out completely at constant temperature and on freezing gives two components as solid phases. That is the when the liquid freezes the composition is going to be the same as it was present in the liquid phase. The temperature corresponding to eutectic point is called eutectic temperature. This is always lower than the melting points of either components. For example, in lead silver system, the eutectic mixture containing 2.6% silver and 97.4% lead melts at 303 degrees Celsius, a temperature lower than the melting point of silver which is 961 degrees Celsius and that of lead that is 327 degrees Celsius. A quick revision of what is congruent and incongruent melting point. In congruent melting point, systems in which two pure components react to form a compound which is stable. Here, in this system, when the two components react, they form a compound which is stable up to its melting point. At melting point, it melts to give a liquid of same composition as that of solid compound. The compound form is said to have a congruent melting point and example for this is ferric chloride water system and in today's class we are going to discuss regarding ferric chloride water system itself. In incongruent melting point systems where the two components react to form a compound but these compound which is formed do not remain stable up to its melting point that is when they are heated it decomposes before the melting point to give a new solid phase and a solution with composition different from that of solid phase. When this happens, the compound is said to undergo transition or peritectic reaction and is said to have incongruent melting point. Example is sodium potassium system and sodium sulfate water system. Coming to ferric chloride system. This is a two component system with a congruent melting point. In this system, the two components namely ferric chloride and water react to form four stable hydrates. Remember, here when the two components that is ferric chloride and water react, they form two sta four stable hydrates and the four stable hydrates are represented with the formula ferric chloride 12H2O, ferric chloride 7H2O, ferric chloride 5H2O and ferric chloride 4H2O. Each hydrate possesses a congruent melting point. Each hydrate here, each hydrate has its own congruent melting point that is it is stable up to the melting point and melts at the melting point to give a liquid with same composition. At this temperature, the saturated solution of the hydrate has the same composition of the solid. So, this is where we are going to see the four 
hydrates of ferric chloride which are going to be four stable hydrates apart from this there are two more solid phases we do have two more solid phases namely anhydrous ferric chloride and ice and we have got one liquid phase and a solute and one gaseous phase as well so overall we have got eight possible phases for ferric chloride water system that is the four hydrated one that is ferric chloride with 12 h2o ferric chloride with 7 h2o ferric chloride with 5 h2o ferric chloride 4 h2o anhydrous ferric chloride ice liquid phase and gaseous phase corresponding to the congruent point each hydrate is hydrate a maximum is obtained for each hydrate for each hydrate we obtain a maximum for each hydrate we obtain a maximum curve is going to be obtained and the point here and the point a a b c d lie on the curve while the points corresponding to the small letters a b c d e f g is going to be on the dotted horizontal line now as we know uh, as we know in um, any phase diagram we have got areas we have got curves and we have got we have got points so in uh, at present let us discuss the curves coming to the curve ab coming to the curve a is going to represent the normal freezing point of water a is going to represent the normal freezing point of water and as we go on adding ferric chloride as we go on adding ferric chloride what do we observe is there is going to be a lowering of freezing point as ferric chloride is added the freezing point is going to be lowered and it is lowered up to a point b where it has got where it has got minimum temperature that is minus 55 degrees celsius and at this phase and at this phase a new phase with ferric chloride 12 h2o gets separated out at this temperature that is at the lowest temperature minus 55 degrees celsius a new phase ferric chloride 12 h2o separates coming to the curve b c d coming to the curve b c d now as the temperature is raised as i am going to raise the temperature temperature ferric chloride is added and we are going to add more and more ferric chloride the curve travels along b c d at c i get a maximum saturated ferric chloride solution which is going to be in equilibrium along the curve and this curve is called as the solubility curve of dodecahedride that is 12 h2o this is going to be the solubility curve for for ferric chloride dodecam hydrate and the maximum saturation of 12 h2o is going to be here at the point c now it is going to be noted that it will it is going to be noted that ferric chloride in the solution c causes a lowering it causes a lowering point once we are going to add as we add further ferric chloride what happens is it remains stable up to this point and then here solubility is going to decrease this the temperature such a temperature that is 12 h2o at this composition 12 h2o i have got two distinct lines when we are going to see the small line that is a point b and at the point d it has two distinct solubilities in water that is b and d and this phenomenon of having two solubilities at the same temperature characteristic to this system producing a solid compound is called retroflex solubility and this is called as this point b and d which has got two distinct solubilities in water will be called as retroflex solubility next coming to as we go on adding as we uh, here as we are going on adding ferric chloride the solubility curve of b c d now it is going to b c d the solubility curve terminates at d where another hydrate is going to get separated now at the point d another hydrate is going to get 
separated that is here now it is going to be 7 H2O so now DEF DEF BCD was a solubility curve for ferric chloride dodecahedrate now this curve DEF is going to be the solubility curve for heptahydrate and this is the solubility curve for heptahydrate the curves the curves now let us uh, concentrate on the curve F G H and H J K what do we observe is at the point F <coughs> at the point F 5 H2O appears remember remember at the point B 12 if ferric chloride 12 H2O got separated and at the point D ferric chloride 7 H2O or heptahydrate got separated and at the point F this is going to get will begin to appear from this one it is going to appear at the point F ferric chloride ferric chloride 5 H2O appears and the curve F G H is going to represent the solubility curve solubility curve and at the point H ferric chloride 4 H2O gets separated out and at the point H ferric chloride 4 H2O gets separated likewise when I just go on to consider HJK 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 will be the solubility curve this is going to be the solubility curve for 4 H2O where at J I will be having a saturated solution of ferric chloride for H2O and this curve KL the curve KL is going to appear is going to appear for the solubility curve for anhydrous anhydrous ferric chloride here like there is going to be a maximum saturation of ferric chloride at the point C remember as we are going on adding ferric chloride a lowest temperature is obtained that is minus 55 degrees celsius and further when i go on to add what happens is there is going to be a rise in temperature there is going to be a rise in temperature and maximum is obtained at at the point c at the point c where it is getting saturated one and then this is not going to remain here up to here it is going to remain stable and then as we are going to add further ferric chloride another hydrate gets separated at the point D that is ferric chloride heptahydrate likewise ferric chloride 5 H2O gets separated at the point F and ferric chloride 4 H2O gets separated at the point H and at the point K anhydrous ferric chloride gets separated and KL is going to represent the solubility curve for anhydrous salt the curves AB the curves AB BCD DEF FGH HJK and KL what do we observe is on this curve one solid phase one liquid phase are going to be in equilibrium therefore when we are going to apply the reduced phase rule that is F is equal to C minus P plus 1 it is going to be it is going to be two components it is going to be two components and on the curve we are having two phases are going to be in equilibrium and it will be 2 minus 2 plus 1 is equal to 1 hence in the systems that is ice, sol ice solution that is hydrated solution or 7 H2O ferric chloride 12 H2O with solution or 7 H2O solution it is going to be any point over here any point over here it is going to be mono variant coming to the congruent point that is the congruent points is going to be C E G and G the composition of the solutions at this equilibrium is going to represent a hydrate is going to be identical that is what do we observe is that is going to be at the congruent melting point at the congruent melting point I will just mention the temperatures at this congruent melting point that is at at C what is going to be the melting point at and E G J in the next one but what do we observe is at this congruent 
melting points i do have it is going to be at this one i have got only one component that is only ferric chloride i have got only ferric chloride 12 h2o but there uh, on that point here at that point here i have got two phases are going to be in equilibrium two phases are going to be in equilibrium the solution and the hydrated phase plus 1 so at this point at this point c e g and j it is going to be non variant and if we are just going to observe that is at the congruent point c that is when it is going to be hydrated 12 h2o the congruent melting point is going to be 37 degrees celsius and at the point e and at the point e where a uh, pair 7 h2o is going to be stable up to this and the congruent melting point is going to be 32.5 degrees celsius and at 5 h2o where 5 h2o is going to be stable the congruent melting point is going to be 56 degrees celsius and at 4 h2o it is going to be and at 4 h2o that is at the point j it is going to be stable up to this and that is the reason why h j k is going to be the solubility curve for 4 h2o and here the congruent melting point is going to be 73.5 degrees celsius coming to the eutectic point that is eutectic point is going to be the lowest temperature which is going to be obtained so in this phase diagram for ferric chloride water system could be split into five eutectic diagrams i am going to have five eutectic temperature one is going to be lowest temperature one is going to be the point that is ab where the lowest temperature obtained is going to be minus 55 degrees celsius the point a is going to represent the melting point but as we are going to add while the c is going to the point c is going to represent the congruent melting point of 12 h2o the curve ab the curve ab is going to represent the melting point of ice while the curve cb by this ab is going to be the melting point of melting point of ice here and the curve cb is going to be the cb is going to represent the melting point curve for the ferric chloride 12 h2o where the lowest temperature is going to be minus 55 degrees celsius similarly other temperature other eutectic points other eutectic points are going to be d d is going to be another eutectic point where the lowest temperature is obtained f is going to be another eutectic point where the lowest temperature is going to be obtained for d is going to be the eutectic temperature obtained for ferric chloride 12 h2o and f is going to be for heptahydrate h is going to be h is going to be for pentahydrate and k is going to be for 4 h2o so at this eutectic points at this eutectic points here it is going to be i have got two components over here ferric chloride and water but at this eutectic point at this eutectic point we are going to have three phases are going to be in equilibrium three phases will be in equilibrium for example at the point b the equilibrium is going to be ice solution and 12 hydrate ferric chloride 12 hydrate so three phases are going to be in equilibrium and here so it is going to be non variant at the eutectic points at the eutectic points the point b d f h and k it is going to be non variant so the lowest temperature at the point b is going to be minus 55 degrees celsius at the point d it is going to be 27 degrees celsius at the point f it is going to be 30 at the point h it is going to be 55 and at the point j it is going to be 66 degrees celsius and the reference for this is going to be which i have taken is from physical chemistry or principles of physical chemistry by puri sharma and patania chemistry for engineers by dr bk ambastam thank you students